Hi, uh, my name is George Ransom, and uh, we're from the historic Walpole Historic Society. Uh, today we're going to capture a uh, historical profile of one of the uh, most uh, financially significant uh, uh, Walpole men who uh, created quite an empire for himself in terms of his business, Henry Plimpton Kendall. Uh, Henry Plimpton Kendall actually was born in Boston. Uh, his father was an Orthodox minister. and soon after moved out to uh, live in on the uh, the homestead he's living he moved out to live in the the homestead which uh, you can see pictured here uh, back as it looked a uh, hundred years ago and the homestead was actually the largest uh, house at, at the time in Walpole and it's been the former home of uh, Calvin Plimpton and uh, various other Plimpton members and uh, got the name of the homestead because each and every year they had the, uh, all the family members would gather there. It was big enough to host uh, large uh, gatherings. So he grew up there uh, in, in the farm. It actually was a gentleman's farm. Uh, and uh, later on as he grew up, uh, he attended, uh, as is many of the family members of Plimpton, uh, they all went to uh, Amherst College, which at that point was uh, largely a liberal arts and uh, college for uh, ministry work. Uh, he was uh, involved in uh, Amherst College football team for a number of years and later uh, the track team. Uh, as he graduated from college his uh, uh, relationship with his uncle George Arthur Plimpton who lived on the farm, the Plimpton farm right up the street, uh, got him a job, uh, helped secure him a job working for his uncle Henry who lived next door. Uh, on uh, Plimpton Street and with the uh, Plimpton Press uh, using his business skills uh, hoping to uh, put the financial um, aspects of the business together. He worked there for a while using a lot of uh, new innovative scientific methods and was uh, there for about three or four years. Uh, it was pr proposed by George that uh, he be recruited to uh, work for the uh, Lewis Mill after Willard Lewis died, not Bradford Lewis, uh, and to take over uh, the business since uh, George Arthur Plimpton bought the business uh, in 1905, I think it was. Uh, and it was a, um, a struggling company at the time, and uh, it had a lot of uh, various other businesses along the way, and they weren't up to date with all the modern uh, practices of uh, an industrial uh, complex. They had about 80 people working there in various capacities. So you can see here on the uh, Lewis Manufacturing, this is a um, plan in 1909. It, it's uh, right out on West Street, uh, right behind uh, the town square in Walpole. And there were about five or six buildings there and they're all part of the uh, complex that was purchased by George Arthur Plimpton. Uh, and his uh, focus was to have his nephew, uh, Henry, Plimpton Kendall take over the business, run the business, and put it in financial shape using more of the scientific methods uh, uh, that he learned in college. He ran the business for a number of years uh, for his uncle, and then uh, his uncle um, sold him the business. The business basically uh, worked on um, fabric, uh, sewing, uh, manufacturing of uh, lint, uh, cotton fabrics, uh, and uh, the business uh, a few years ago during the Civil War was primarily uh, manufacturing of uh, bandages and gauze for uh, taking care of the wounds for uh, soldiers. So they continued for a while and uh, Henry Plimpton Kendall uh, pushed it forward to do uh, a lot of varying uh, businesses. Uh, later on became involved in um, the manufacturing of, as we see in the next slide, um, uh, this is actually the Kendall Company here. Uh, you can see how it's uh, shrunk in some of the buildings but grown in some of the size. Uh, here's a, a picture of what uh, Mr. Uh, Kendall looked like uh, uh, during his time here in, in Plimptonville. Uh, so he primarily worked on uh, innovative project in terms of milk products. Uh, for filtering milk, uh, keeping it uh, pasteurized. Mm -hmm. He was also involved in the development of uh, a synthetic product 
that uh, we later uh, found out to be uh, and known to be uh, Pampers, uh, along with uh, various other uh, in the industrial uh, innovations that uh, helped keep uh, moisture away from the bombs as they were sent over to uh, World War I uh, and uh, wicking uh, products. So he moved the company forward. Uh, there were railroad tracks right in front of the company unloading and offloading uh, products. Uh, the products, uh, basically, as you'll see in one of the next slides, uh, you'll see uh, various uh, medical uh, bandages, products, band-aids, uh, and we know how big they are nowadays. Uh, and they were responsible for all of those uh, products. Later, they, the company merged uh, later on in life um, uh, with uh, Colgate Palmolive, uh, and later on it, it focused in on uh, with uh, Tyco Industries, and uh, it was basically a uh, $43 million business uh, with uh, 10,000 uh, employees worldwide uh, in the company at the time when he sold it. Uh, Mr. Kendall moved out of the, uh, the homestead and built a farm out up on Moose Hill, which now most of us uh, are able to recognize as the, uh, the new Audubon Center and all the land that was allowed uh, there at the time. Now, Mr. Uh, Kendall uh, basically operated the business uh, in, in a highly efficient manner and uh, was able to just uh, enjoy some time sailing down in Mattapoisett where he had a summer house and his interest was in uh, the ocean, sailing, and yachting. Uh, he funded and set up the um, museum uh, in Sharon, the Whaley Museum in Sharon, has since been um, defunct and taken apart. But uh, he was the uh, primary supporter of that uh, project. Uh, as the company grew, uh, he was able to uh, expand and uh, continue to expand. Uh, he became a uh, an associate uh, for FDR as a business consultant uh, on a uh, national basis, and actually uh, he describes uh, as a close friendship with uh, FDR during his presidency. So he was a international uh, figure here in, from Walpole, spent all his life uh, in Walpole, Sharon area, summering down in Metapoisett and uh, library that he uh, like created down there in the Whaley Museum. He was also um, wise enough to collect all of the family uh, pictures, portraits, uh, genograms, and all the history that was involved with the Plimptons uh, when they lived in the homestead. He took that with him and he has since turned that over to the Walpole Historic Society. So now we down at the society have uh, copies of all the, uh, actually the originals of all the pictures, slides, and the history that uh, was involved with the Plimptons uh, and uh, Kendall's. Kendall's son uh, went on to uh, study physics and uh, won a uh, Nobel Peace Prize uh, in his time. Uh, and uh, he was a significant business figure in, in Walpole. Thanks for watching.